Welcome to the AAC on ESPN. Picture perfect Saturday morning here in Tulsa. And the rivalry that dates back to 1914. They've been getting together along the turnpike. Oklahoma State in town, right 13th in the country. And here's the run out for the Golden Hurricane under second year head coach Kevin Wilson. Tulsa looking for a signature win this afternoon. This is what happened for the Pokes last weekend. Down a couple scores, a big second half rally in the All-American. Ali Gordon taking it to the house and a win over the Hogs in double overtime. So they start out the season at 2-0. and oh. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Tulsa. I'm Beth Mullins alongside Rod Gilmore. We've got Lauren Sisler down on the field. The story here for Oklahoma State, of course, Rod, you're coming off a big SEC win last week. Mm -hmm. You got the Big 12 on the horizon next week. Focus is the key this afternoon. In the words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. Oklahoma State has to focus on this game because if you're thinking about that win over Arkansas last week and looking ahead to Utah in a Big 12 matchup next week, that's a recipe for Tulsa to be focused and steal a game. Yeah, and one guy that should be highly motivated today is the leading rusher from a year ago in the country, Ali Gordon. What is wrong with Ollie Gordon? Everybody wants to know. I mean, last year's top running back with 1,700 yards and winning the Doak Walker Award is off to a slow start this season. And it's not all his fault. He's got a veteran offensive line that has struggled to, in the run blocking phase of it, but he's got to do his part. He has not been as decisive a runner and needs to just get the yardage instead of trying to break one every play. So one All-American is available today for State. One is not. For more on that, here's Lauren. Yeah, Beth, unfortunately, Oklahoma State loses its best player in Colin Oliver, but stepping in in a big way, Obi Azigbo, and he has been nothing short of inspiring in how he stepped in his journey here. He didn't even start playing football until he was a freshman in high school. He went to a D2 school as a walk-on, only dreamed of playing at the Division I level, and now he, here he is playing for the Cowboys. And I'll tell you, he said, look, I'm not making this any bigger than it is. I'm staying focused, taking it rep by rep, as I have every single day. Thank you, Lauren. And we are underway from Tulsa, and the kick from Reed Melfers goes through the end zone for the touchback. After Tulsa won the toss and deferred, we will get our first look at the Oklahoma State offense and their seventh-year quarterback, Alan Bowman. Seven years. You probably pick up a few degrees when you're around seven he years. <laughs> 2018 was when he was a freshman. He is a big, strong quarterback, 6'3", 220, excels at the quick passing game, the run pass option and they need his leadership today looking for him to complement the run game with some better accuracy down the field and his first pass will dump it off to Ollie Gordon coming out of the backfield really looking for ways early here Rod to get Ollie going and a lot on that offensive line they got knocked around quite a bit against Arkansas a week ago last week Arkansas decided that Gordon would not beat them that they would put eight men in the box and they would force Bowman to be the big player on offense first deep shot of the afternoon and it's an overthrow intended for Dejan Stribling yeah, you know Beth and that that's sort of the approach it becomes one of these hey Gordon is so great we're not going to let him beat us, anybody but him. And so the challenge for Bowman is to prove that he can make those throws down the field, the one he just missed, and to carry the offense early on. The more he does that, the more it will open up the game for Gordon. His accuracy in the season opener was 72%. It dropped to 56 completion percentage a week ago, and it's a third down and six. Four-man pressure is handled, and he completes the pass for the first down out to the 39. And it's the first catch of the day for Brennan Presley, the senior who's back home here in Tulsa, one of their all-time leading receivers. Pretty focused and excited. A little emotion after that first down pick. He is playing against his brother today on the other side, a wide receiver for Tulsa. Start at Bixby High School together. Then Braylon joined his brother temporarily at Oklahoma State. And now finding a home at Tulsa. Gordon off the left side, and he gets out across the 40-yard line. Big challenge for this defensive front today for Tulsa against a much more experienced, much bigger offensive line. The strength here is their linebackers. They'll run it again with Gordon. More room to roam, and he's out across midfield. Dane Hodge with the tackle that'll move the chains again at 10. You know, Beth, Gordon is a downhill runner, a straight ahead runner, and he wasn't able to do that last week. Arkansas forced him to go lateral. That's what Tulsa has to do today. 
trying to use a little more of the width of the field. That's Rashad Owens, something Mike Gundy told us this week they didn't do in the first half, and they did it much better in the second half against Arkansas. Arkansas dared them to play in the middle of the field with the eight men in the box, dared them to throw the ball outside the hash mark, and they didn't do it until the second half. They've come out today using the wide part of the field. Owens and Presley both to the bottom of your screen. They'll run it with Gordon the other way. Gets tangled up in the middle, close to the yardage, about a yard shy. Chris Thompson, the transfer from Southern California with the tackle. And it's another third down, this one's short yardage. This is two down territory if they don't get it. Quick snap, Gordon diving through the middle and he's got the first down. You know, Beth, it's, in, it's really important for Tulsa to be aggressive defensively on first down. They have to attack the line of scrimmage and get this team into second and long. You see them come back on the field now with their heavier package. They really need to be aggressive early on. There's Mike Gundy. Now in his 20th season, 18 consecutive winning seasons. As a coach, he's 6-0 against Tulsa. As a starting quarterback for the Pokes back in the late 80s, 2-1. You're telling me Mike Gundy has done all his adulting at Oklahoma State. Brief departure when he spent a little time at Maryland and Baylor, but otherwise all OK State all the time. And the trick play, Presley, terrific block downfield, and he's close to the 10. Dalton Cooper, the all Big 12 left tackle, mustering his way downfield to lead the way. Talk about setting that up perfectly. They ran that outside zone to one side. They give you the same action. Come right back with Presley. Let him get loose in front of his hometown fans, his <laughs> high school friends, his family, and his little brother on the other side. They can all check him out on this opening drive. And good on Dalton Cooper. He's only played 50 games in college football, so he knows his way around the outside to lead the way for Ali. They go empty set here. And the crossing route underneath, ball is jarred loose, and they're going to rule that an incompletion. That was the tight end, Quentin Stewart. Tyree Carlisle made the play. This is a real strong tackle by Tulsa. Playing a little zone defense down there. This is a huge second down. They have to keep the Cowboys in second and long and third and long, or else it gets really difficult. First possession, first trip into the red zone. Again, they get to the outside to give Brennan Presley some room to roam. Hodge with the touchdown saving tackle, and it's going to be third down and four. They're going to go turbo again here, get to the line quickly. They still check to the sideline, even though it's the new addition this year of the helmet communications between the sideline and the quarterback. Oklahoma State has cards on the sideline they hold up. I thought that was supposed to be a thing of the past. Gordon, the nice hesitation, breaking a tackle, and lunges his way down inside the five. And are they saying his knee was down outside the five, which would be a half a yard short? And they are going hurry up. No chance for substitutions. They'll try Gordon again on fourth down and one, and they'll get it. So now, first and goal for the Pokes. Line up and do it again. That's a 225-pound man, full speed, who was frustrated last week, only 49 yards rushing. Mike Gundy is focused mm. on getting Gordon going early in this game. Statement for both Ollie and that offensive line. They're dominating, and it's the 14th play of this opening drive. First charge, time out of the half. Tulsa. And if nothing else, to catch their seconds. breath on this one. Timeout, Golden Hurricane. You know, defensively, you think a team can't go 14 plays on a drive for you without making a couple mistakes, and you'll get off the field. Tulsa, <laughs> they've hung in there for 14 plays, haven't given up too many big plays, yet they can't get off the field and almost five minutes off the clock on this drive. Well, Mike Gundy said the difference last week was the conditioning of this Oklahoma State team. He's trying to take advantage of that early this afternoon as Kevin Wilson looks on across the way at Gundy. So we've seen Brennan Presley already with several touches on this opening drive. His brother Braylon is on the other side. The former high school teammates at nearby 
Bixby, the two Spartans, now have gone their separate ways after they won state championships together and Player of the Year awards. I'm curious how uh, mom and dad and siblings are going to handle today. That, that can't be easy. <laughs> nope. The only possibility of head-to-head -head might be on special teams. Gordon tries to get to the outside, cuts it back to the middle, stuck at the line of scrimmage. Couple of good pops in there for the Tulsa D. He's more decisive today. I like that about his style right now. He is not dancing in the backfield, stutter stepping, trying to figure out where he should go. He's making one cut and going, and that's when he's at his best. That was Miles Jackson leading the way there, edge rusher. Gavin Potter, Zach Marcuselli, Chris Thompson. That linebacking core is where it's at. And their mission today to try and stop that guy, not an easy task. Six passes and eight run plays on this drive. Back to the air, the receiver screen. Brennan Presley fighting for the end zone. And he stepped out of bounds at the one. You think uh, Mike Gundy and company want to make sure that Presley gets uh, those nerves out? He gets a chance to do something in front of his family and, and friends. So third down and goal, two for three so far on this drive. They bring in the fullback, Jake Schultz. Anybody but Gordon touches this ball, we should all be shocked. Mm. Schultz on the left side. Owens in motion, and they're going to throw for it, and they'll get it. And it is Brennan Presley with the touchdown catch. Oh. They got him going right off the bat. This opening drive heavily focused on Brennan Presley, giving him a chance to get settled into this game. And when you are locked in coverage on the outside like that, you cannot let the receiver inside. You have no help on the inside. Really good effort by Presley to get inside of Parker. Logan Ward for the extra point, and he's got it. 75 yards, 16 plays, and over six minutes. And the Cowboys, after a slow start last week against Arkansas, different story here this morning. Tulsa time. Brennan Presley for six. work for Brendan Presley and Ali Gordon 16 play scoring drive the longest of the season for Oklahoma State and can't get much more balanced than eight runs and eight passes yeah really nice job of uh, spreading the ball around good adjustment from last week and the fair catch on the kickoff Lloyd Avant the first possession of the ball game for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane so we go from a guy at Oklahoma State who's been playing for seven years to a guy at Tulsa, Kirk Francis, who's been playing for seven games. That's one of the subplots of today's matchup. Yeah, local star, who's a high school star here in Tulsa, had to walk on here at Tulsa after throwing for 10,000 yards in high school. I, you know, a little irritated about that. Awarded a scholarship a few months after he got here, but, uh, you know, he had to prove it, and he has proven it, and he's the starting quarterback, and he's earned that scholarship already. He'll work out of the gun. And the throw to the outside, incomplete, but flags flying from all directions. Looking for Cam Smith, or, or excuse me, Cam Smith with the coverage on Cam Benjamin. Benjamin is Kirk Francis's favorite target by a long shot. I think the officials had their choice on that one of either pass interference or late hit personal foul. Pass interference. Number three, the defense. Ball will be placed, a spot and foul. Results in automatic first down. Henry Johns, our referee today. How about a look at our impact players brought to you by Cracker Barrel? Well, for Oklahoma State, we've already seen one. Bren, Brennan Presley dominant on the opening drive. Nick Martin on defense will be a key factor. And Cam Benjamin, wide receiver who was just mugged by Oklahoma State, is going to have to have a big day. We'll see Miles Jackson move around an awful lot on that Tulsa defense. 
Hand off, and it's Anthony Watkins breaking tackles and breaking free into the secondary. And Watkins across midfield, taken down by Cam Smith, a run of 21. Excellent blocking up front. You cannot tackle when you're on the ground. And the Tulsa offensive line cut down that defensive line. They'll try him again, and again he breaks free of an arm tackle, slams into the defender at the 40-yard line and held up there. Trey Rucker, who leads the country in tackles, has his first of the day. You know, Beth, these opening two plays on the ground are interesting because you and I thought a major issue for this offensive line would be the size and the strength of that defensive line. But the opening couple of plays, Tulsa's offensive lines handled them. You hear, hear a lot of talk this week about looking for a signature win, fighting for some respect against an in-state opponent that has dominated the rivalry in recent years. And this is Lloyd Avant. It has been running back by committee through the first couple of games with Avant, Watkins, and Bill Jackson. Yeah. Nine straight losses, Tulsa, to Oklahoma State. And Kevin Wilson told us yesterday, I, I don't know, it seems like it's been 30 years since Tulsa actually won yeah. a game. Now in his second season with that uh, extensive background on the offensive side, uh, head coach at Indiana and then offensive coordinator for many years at Ohio State and Oklahoma. He's seen Oklahoma State before, Avant. And right now, the Golden Hurricane running at will against this Pokes defense that gave up over 600 total yards last week. Well, and the troubling thing for Oklahoma State is that they've been deficient in pass defense. They've given up a lot of big plays, a little bit better against the run, but not today so far. They have been pushed around the counter, the zone read, these inside zone rather, these things have worked well. On first down from the 30, Francis with time, inaccurate on the throw to the outside, looking for Jacob Emmers. Well, Francis is a very accurate passer. He, he doesn't have a big arm, not a huge above average arm, but he gets the ball out quickly and he throws with great accuracy. So the short passing game outside the hash is typically where you find his throw. Two tight end set, they bunch him up on the left side of the line. The pitch to Avant gets a nice block on the edge, and he'll pick up four there. Run out of bounds by Nick Martin, the man in the middle, the junior out of Texarkana. Led power five last year in solo tackles. And 140 takedowns a season ago, the most at Oklahoma State since 1984. That's why he was one of our impact players. He is. He is a guy. He, he really is active. He's got great speed, great instincts. You've got to block him if you're going to run inside. Can they get to the quarterback without their edge rusher, Colin Oliver, today, as Lauren Sisler reported? Here's a third down. And the pass incomplete, looking for Grayson Tempest. And it's fourth down, Tulsa. Francis has been a little bit high with his throws. This opening drive, maybe, maybe some jitters, a little nerves, big game here at home. 0 for 2 on this drive, so the offense will step aside. The kicking unit comes on. It's Seth Morgan. 1 for 2. His make was 29 yards. His miss was 32. This is a 44-yard attempt. Got the leg but not the accuracy. No good, and it remains 7-0 Oklahoma State. You know, Beth, I'm a little bit surprised at the play selection and that they weren't running on third down with a chance on fourth because they're not going to win this game with field goals. Not going to get it that way. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Oh, some good old school programs back when you used to collect the programs and bring that. them home with you. Back Love in 1914, 
a span of mules and 45 students. Does can that you? equal 72 miles? Is that? Uh, probably. Can, right. can you get these now or is it all digital? <laughs> Hey, how about the impact players? Brought to you by Cracker Barrel, already having an impact on this one. Yeah, Presley, Martin, we've seen them already. Benjamin and Jackson. Benjamin's gonna have a, a rough day out there. He's gotta prove he can get away from a lot of the pressure he'll get. Presley opening drive, four catches and a touchdown. Saw Martin on defense do his thing already. Benjamin, he, he's, he's gonna have to be a real key factor for them today. You're looking at guys like Miles Jackson. They, they've got to be better on first down, yep, don't they, after that, after that impressive first drive for OK State? I'd like to see them be more aggressive and try to get second and long as they have here. After Bowman could not connect with Owens, we'll go the short way to Brennan Presley. So the short passing game, solid so far. He's missed on the two deep balls. Yeah, you, you know, Beth, this irritates me. <laughs> You, you cannot give free access throws when you are the underdog playing a team that throws the short ball like that. You can't leave your corners eight, nine yards off. You have to roll them up and take away the easy throw of eight yards, six yards there. Don't let them have that. Looking for a third down and five stop if you're on the Tulsa side. And Bowman has not been sacked this season. Mm -hmm. He's got Gordon now Presley going to join him in the backfield. They'll run Ollie and they'll run him right up the gut. He's going to be short. Good stuff up the middle. Led by uh, Joe Yelly. And it's fourth down. And Potter got in there. 19 linebacker, veteran guy. And that is a huge, huge stop. And uh, I, I don't know if you can get the crowd into it. This, this crowd seems decidedly orange flavored as I look around. There's a lot of orange color here. Not as much blue and gold as you'd expect. Easy drive over from Stillwater due west of us. High kick headed towards Cam Benjamin. This Tulsa team does have two special team return touchdowns on the season. No chance there. Seven nothing Cowboys on the orange side today in Tulsa. Kevin Connors in studio, Wisconsin, hosting a top five team for just the fourth time ever at Camp Randall. Scary moment for Tyler Van Dyke, hauled down by Keanu Coote, appeared to injure his right leg. Van Dyke was carted off the field. Backup Braden Locke has replaced him. Beth, it's a 3-0 Badgers lead midway through the first. Thank you, Kevin, for the early lead for Whiskey, but a tough injury to take there for the quarterback as Anthony Watkins gets the carry. They were able to run effectively in their first possession, Rod, but the passing game absent thus far. Yeah, they, they got to get Kirk Francis settled. 0 for 2, and he's missed badly on both his throws. Flag down on the play. Steve Spurrier Jr. did say they'd move him around a bit, get him go mobile if that oh, helps sorry. him. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, still second down. With the false start there by their left tackle, Caden Stanton. Yeah, the freshman. Listen, you know, Kirk Francis understands that he has not completed the pass. He knows that big zero is there. So does his offensive coordinator, Steve Spurrier Jr., and he knows he's got to get his quarterback comfortable. He did not look comfy that opening drive. And, he, you know, he, he can throw the ball on the move, you know, but you have to give him something easy, comfortable. He's really good at the run pass option game. You give him something that he can get his confidence going. Played his high school ball at Metro Christian Academy, a Patriot. About 17 miles away from here is where he used to play. They'll try and run it and stuffed on the right side. It's gonna be third down. You know, the interesting thing, he was not offered a scholarship by Tulsa. They never went to see him play. They never watched him in person. And so that was the reluctance to give him a scholarship and say, look, you can walk on and, you know, you can prove it to us. But, wow. Third down and long. He's going to try and take the top off and the overthrow looking for Joseph Williams. And that'll bring the punting unit on. Yeah, you know, the, the longer... Mark? Yes. The longer he goes without completing a pass, the worse it gets. The bigger it all becomes, not just for him, but for the offense. When are we going to get a completion down the field? Angus Davies on to punt it away in the direction of Brennan Presley. But this is a brother sighting. 
Presley touched the ball a lot opening drive. It is a low kick directly at Brennan. He's going to have a chance. Looking to get to the edge. And he's taken down at the 35-yard line. Braylon Presley was out there with the coverage team. Came in late to try and tackle his brother. Zion Steptoe is the guy that got there first. So back to the offensive unit. And Alan Bowman, the seventh year man out of Grapevine, Texas. His second year after he won the starting job last season. Third in the Big 12 in passing yardage after stops at Texas Tech and Michigan. And that's Sessi Vailahi, who we saw quite a bit of late in the game last weekend, gets his first carry of the day. Yeah, but really good play up front by Ty Newhouse, 72, the nose guard. Really kind of stuffed everything inside. No place to go and forced that play to the outside. Gordon already nine carries. The fake to Vailahi. Bowman fires down to midfield, and the catch is made on the run by Rashad Owens. Tripped up around the 40-yard line by Dane Hodge. That is a big man, at wide receiver. Not fun trying to tackle that guy. Rashad Owens is 6'2", 230 pounds. That's a tight end playing wide receiver. Good gainer there. He's looking for more deep down the field and hauled in inside the 10 by Dejon Stribling. And it's first and goal, Oklahoma State. Uh, this is Bowman dealing now. And this he, might be coming back. Yeah, it, beautiful throw. Holding. Pops this in Offense, perfectly. number 72. 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Well, that negates their biggest pass play of the day. Bowman, nonetheless, 8 for 11. They've uh, mixed things up nicely for Allen to get that accuracy back up. Well, you know, Mike Gundy got the coaching staff's attention last week, yes, and he, he said, I was not impressed. I was not happy with my staff. They kept running the ball into the teeth of an eight-man front. Not crazy about it. I want things to be more mixed up, and they've done that today. Empty set here on first and 20, back across midfield. Tulsa with a four-man pressure. They'll drop eight. Brennan Presley still able to find some room. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Dane Hodge with another tackle. Yeah, they're, they're giving him way too much room. And Presley is so good at making his cuts out of routes that if you give him that much room, he's going to be way, way open. Six catches already. Caught everyone that's been targeted to him. Owens. Using that size rod to go up against the smaller defenders and bring that one in. Yeah, he, he's going to own things out there. He's faced up against five foot nine and five foot ten corners. The tallest one is uh, Carlisle, number four. He wasn't on him that time, so huge size advantage for Owens. Ten yard gain to Presley, and now 11 more for Owens, and the return of Ollie Gordon to the backfield. First and ten from the 31. Gordon hit in the backfield, able to bounce off of it, maybe picked up a couple. Were you surprised that Gordon got off to such a slow start this season? I mean, I think we all mm -hmm. expected him to be in the thick of the Heisman discussion right off the bat, but not so. Yeah, I, I think that first game, probably a little cruise control. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think a lot of people thought there would be a, a more of an explosion last week against Arkansas. But, you know, Mike Gundy gave the Hogs a lot of credit for coming up with a good game plan. That's going to take care of the first quarter. Oklahoma State with possession and the lead in this turnpike rivalry. Coach, you indicated this week you guys wanted to get out to a fast start. You opened up strong there. What do you guys need to do? Continue pushing forward and get your foot on the gas here in the second quarter into the half. We've got to keep working to get a run game established, set some runs up, get some more of those four to six, eight yard carries. What stands out to you defensively? Well, it seems like we're tackling pretty good. Um, we got to get in our gaps, make sure we're sound, keep some pressure on the quarterback. Thanks, Coach. 
Thank you, Lauren and Coach Gundy. And on second down, they'll throw it to Gavin Freeman, fighting for some extra yardage back into the middle. It looks like he's about a yard shy. More than twice the number of plays run and more than twice the uh, minutes worked off the clock time of possession in that first quarter for the folks. Controlling the game, taking the crowd, what, what little amount of crowd is in blue and gold, keeping them sort of silent. Let's see if it's Ali Gordon time. They rushed for 47 yards on their first drive, none in their last two drives. Gordon will give it a go. Good move, little jitterbug in the backfield after it looked like he was stopped short, he's got it. it. A little bit more aggressiveness by Tulsa. Really, really nice, slanting their defensive line, bringing their linebackers. You'll see the movement right away, and there you see Ostrowski, 55, getting into the backfield. This time they do get into the backfield to meet up with Ali. Gavin Potter, the senior grad student from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, alongside Zach Marcaselli, his former high school teammate, went their separate ways in college and now back together again. Get one last ride together back home. Nice thing to see them do. Big second down and long here. Bailai now in at tailback. Too much room up top on the receiver, giving way too much room. Play action. Bowman looking for a one-on-one -on -one to the bottom of your screen, and it's complete to Stribling. And Alan Bowman is now 12 of 15. And that was first half. a great throw. Uh, his receiver, Stribling, was not open. He had the defensive back draped all over him. He put that ball right where he could handle it. Six straight completions. They're into the red zone and now inside the 10. Three guys in the backfield, and they'll try to throw it over the top, Stribling up to get it, and it's touchdown, Oklahoma State. Second TD pass for Bowman, one to Presley, and now one to Stribling. Well, we talked about the size advantage. Stribling, six foot two, up against a corner who's about 5'10", five, 5'9", five, and great leverage. Campbell never saw the ball, never got a chance to compete for it. A beautiful route, beautiful throw. Just give your receiver a chance, drop that ball into the corner of the end zone. Stribling comes up with it. Logan Ward will attempt the PAT. Shea Freibaum, the long snapper. Wes Paul, the holder. And he's got it. Early in the second, and a two-touchdown lead for the Pokes. Bowman proving that he can be that guy at quarterback. You want to handle my running game? I got you. I'll just drop dimes all game long, shriveling on the other end. The Pokes not looking like they're going to be upset. SEC on ABC. Triple header for you going on right now. South Carolina leading LSU still to come. Aggies and Gators, and then primetime Georgia at Kentucky. The Dogs going for a 42nd consecutive regular season win. Hey, check out the new Where to Watch feature only on the ESPN app at ESPN.com to find out where the games are available. After the touchback, check in with Kevin Connors. Beth Taj Brooks back in the lineup after missing last week with an arm injury. Trevor Maddich, the legs sure look good. Yeah, he's got fresh legs. In the first quarter, 11 carries, 74 yards. He's on pace if they let him keep running for 300 rushing yards coming off of injury. Already two touchdowns and a 17-7 Red Raiders lead. Beth and Rod. Yeah, like this one, that game, uh, it could be a big weekend. A lot of opportunities for the American Athletic Conference with showdowns looking for an upset or two. Benjamin to the outside for the catch. First completion for Francis. Yes. Exactly what they needed to do to get his confidence going, to get this offense in rhythm. This offense has to stay on the field. The defense is being worn out. Time of possession, huge in favor. Three to one. Yep, yep. And total play is close to it, three to one. And a 14-0 Oklahoma State lead. Um, 
Uh, Alan Bowman with two touchdown passes here in the first half. Francis looking to throw again, and he's got a second completion in a row, and it's Benjamin down the sideline. He stepped out back in his own territory. Looked like they'll mark him out. Corey Black with the coverage at about the uh, 47. Beautiful play call, crossing route against man coverage. That is the hardest route for a defensive back to cover. You are chasing across the field. Great pass protection. It is so important for Tulsa to stay on the field now and give their defensive rest and try to get a score. Tulsa talked this week about keeping this close, trying to put some pressure on the pokes late in the game. See if they can come up with some big plays. There's Lloyd Avant. They really like this true freshman out of Humble, Texas. He's been their leading rusher in the first two games. Well, if they don't get anything on this drive, they may lose contact with the Cowboys because offensively, Oklahoma State's rolling. They've got to get something out of this drive to stay connected. Already with a missed field goal attempt from 44 yards out in the first quarter. They'll try the end around here. And it's Benjamin trying to get him involved as much as they can. He's their big playmaker. Did not miss a play last week in the loss to Arkansas State. Had six catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown. You know, they, this is only their third possession of the game, and they had a three and out last time, so they really haven't gotten into a rhythm and gotten everybody involved in the offense yet. Presley hasn't touched the ball yet. He's in the slot now. Right on the hash. Brennan, whose older brother Brennan has a touchdown catch today. Avant, oh, what a grab as he reached behind him. Unable to hang on, though, as he slams into the turf. Well, he saved a yes, pick. Because Nick Martin was right there about to pull that away and head in the other direction. So getting an incompletion out of that was a win for Tulsa. Unfortunately, they are not able to keep the drive alive. Yeah, watch Martin. He comes off, and he's in position to almost pull that one away. And so the punting unit will come back on. Angus Davies to boot. Contact behind the line, no flag flies, and a fair catch at the 10-yard line. Tulsa fans wanted the flag there. And there is none forthcoming, so the Oklahoma State offense will head back out there. Nope, didn't get him. Still it's the Turnpike rivalry dating back to 1914. There is your map. And due west of us is Stillwater, about 72 miles away. The rivalry uh, dominated by Oklahoma State. That includes winning nine in a row the last time Tulsa was on top, 1998. It's been uh, stops and starts, uh, not playing each other on a yearly basis, but that is changing now. This is the first game of eight straight coming up through 2031. You have the little private university in Tulsa feeling like all the attention goes to the big public school. Oklahoma State and a lot of players who were overlooked by Oklahoma State who wound up in Tulsa. Seeds for a rivalry. Ali Gordon trying to get to the edge and the stiff arm and then run out around the 11. Malachi Jones there with the stop. Good pass run balance. Terrific start for Alan Bowman at quarterback. Yeah, he, he's been amazing. They needed that for him. They figured that out after last week when Arkansas just dared the quarterback to make all the throws. He's making them today. A young man who's been around for a while. Looking to open up the run game for Ali Gordon. Casey Dunn, the offensive coordinator, said, we need Tulsa to play a center fielder. We can't have an extra infielder eight in the box. And Bowman is airing it out and opening it up indeed. Makes the connection there to Shetron. And he's got a first down. You know, Bowman started his career at Texas Tech and then went to Michigan and sat for a couple years behind Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy and had a tough transition there because he wanted to learn a pro-style offense under Jim Harbaugh. He had never 
really taken a snap under center. Had never done a drop that way. And so it took him a while to learn all those things, and he's better off for it for the next level. But he couldn't beat out the other guys because he had been a, you know, a kind of an air raid quarterback. Mm -hmm. Bowman looking deep, got a man behind the defense, and it's Shetron catching it in stride, and he will win the foot race. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. 78 yards on the strike, and it's the third of the day for Alan Bowman. Oh, Alan Bowman, have a day for yourself, young man. You cannot throw a better deep ball than that. He got stribbling out there. Not a long foul ball. He gave him a chance to run underneath that throw. Perfect. He has hit three different guys for scores. And Logan Wade, for the third time, called upon here in the first half. Dead solid, perfect. 21 to nothing. And that is the formula. If you are going to commit to the run, to stopping Gordon, Bowman has to make throws like that. Not just for this game, but for next week against Utah and after that against Kansas State. And look at him drop it in perfectly. Tremendous job by Stribling, blowing by Carlisle, the corner. No, no contest. Never had a shot at it. And the separation speed at the end. Wow. Number 19. Got his undergraduate degree from Texas Tech, picked up a master's at Michigan, and now working on a grad certificate, apparently in throwing the deep ball. And for more on Allen, here's Lauren. Yeah, and there's been someone very special and integral in all of this along the way. Someone special wanted to give him a shout out. Her name's Jessa McCardle. Alan Bowman's fiance never misses a game unless it's a special occasion. And as you can see here, it is a special occasion with the bachelorette party in St. Pete. So I think it qualifies. Her and Alan set to get married in April back home in Texas. Though Alan credits her for being a huge support system for him. They met at Texas Tech. She followed him to Michigan. Now she's a big girl doing CPA things, crunching numbers. She hasn't flinched along the way. She has supported him every bit of his dream. And she's encouraged him to come back out, take that seventh year and come out here and now he's having the best time of his life. I think that's Shimmy just being in the group. But you can't have a bachelorette party now. Oh. You know? I, well, I'm, I'm guessing they're watching right now. Shout out to Jessica. Got a fruity drink with an umbrella the somewhere. Wedding, the wedding's in April. <laughs> you can't have a bachelorette and, well, party the during the, the football season. The wedding's season. not in football season. <laughs> Three touchdown passes today. And uh, initial talk of a potential trap game has not matured into that today. Benjamin with a nice catch for a first down here as Kirk Francis now starting to settle in at quarterback. Yeah, and, and they need that. Benjamin ran a great route to get open on this. A little shake route, runs his defender deep, comes back. See them moving the launch point. For Francis, still took a big hit. It was Jaleel Johnson that got to him. Francis, well protected this time. Up for grabs, a 50-50 ball, and it is caught. Benjamin wins the battle and hauls it in at the 22. He is five foot eight, but plays like he's about 6'3". Watch him go up. Great ball skills here. Out jumping the corner over there, the safety actually, Hilton. That is a matchup he can win, and he did win. 37 yards on the pickup, and the numbers for Cam, 4 for 75. That's an average of close to 19 per grab. And now it's the Golden Hurricane on the move. Watkins back in there at tailback. Steptoe goes in motion. Play action. Tipped at the line and still hauled in by the tight end, Connor Vaughn. That actually may have lost a yard on the play. You feel this sense of desperation by Tulsa? I mean, now they're down three scores, and it's like, well, okay, we, we got to open it up now. We got to get back into it. And you got to keep finding that man over there, Benjamin, 18. I think they can get Presley involved. He has a matchup when he's on the field, when he's in the slot. He's not out there right now, but when they bring him back on, number one, he's got to have that matchup. 
Benjamin, by the way, that last catch puts him over 1,000 yards receiving in his Golden Hurricane career. They'll try the trick play here, and this is Corey Smith looking for the edge. And ping-ponging his way down to the 21, so a, a lot of yardage covered, but only a couple gained. Trey Rucker with the hit, and it's third down. I think this is two down territory. This is, you can't kick field goals now down 21 nothing. See if they go for just part of it back or the whole shebang. Third down and 10, they need the 12 yard line. They'll try and run for it. And they will get some of it back with Anthony Watkins and then a late flag flies after the tackle. I think that's going to be on Ray Burnett, the right guard for Tulsa. Dylan Smith was the defender there that made the stop. A little, little hit after the play. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 65 in the offense, 15-yard penalty, fourth down. A critical mistake. Instead of fourth and a few, it is fourth and a long way. Yeah, just overly aggressive here. Here's Burnett. Play is over with. You know, this is called cleaning up the pile for offensive linemen. You no longer can do that. Used to be good back in the day, but now that's a defenseless guy. You cannot take that shot. I know old school guys are like, that's a ticky-tack thing, but the rules have changed. And uh, they will still keep the offense out there on uh, now fourth and 20. Down three scores. Benjamin goes to the bottom of your screen, the favorite target. And instead, it'll be Avant with a lot of work to do. He needs the 12, and he's cut down around the 14. And that will be a change of possession going back to Oklahoma State. And the Pokes Early will on the take field. over with Runner the stop. Short of the line to gain. Every time First Pulse down, Oklahoma State. They do something to hurt themselves. That, that penalty took them out of a chance to make it a two-score game. 5.53 to go in the first half. Pokes up three scores. Oklahoma State, Allen Bowman with three touchdown passes to three different guys here in the first half, just under six minutes to go. Even though there's the new technology with the headset, you can now talk from the sideline to your quarterback. They'll run it here with Ali Gordon. Ali's 13th carry of this first half. Oklahoma State, they'll still go a little old school, and I, I love it. You got the bat signal, you got the Captain America shield. I think they're just having fun. <laughs> and this is the old Oregon Chip Kelly stuff, and the helmet communication is supposed to eliminate all this stuff. But no, there's, I think they're just having fun with it. <laughs> it's like a backwards nickel. And then the school bus they, they all want to ride on is this guy right here, Ollie Gordon. See if they can get him going. Led the country in rushing a year ago with over 1,700 yards. Yeah, speaking of bus, he's been on the struggle bus oh, this yeah. season a little bit. so. Find a way to get him going. It was more of the Captain America shield last year. No, I'm going for the bag. Going the, oh, bag. the bag. <laughs> I want the bag. The bag of money, man. <laughs> Into the NIL conversation. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. Jeff Bones, Rod Gilmore, Warren Sisler with you. A concerted effort to ground and pound on this possession, and he'll pick up the first down. More of Gordon. 15 carries, 38 yards. You know, Gordon was a highly sought after commodity, talking about the NIL. He, he wanted to stay at Oklahoma State, really didn't entertain offers from other folks. Yeah. Certainly uh, picked up less in a NIL money to stay at Oklahoma State. He's on that short list of running backs that have their eyes on the, uh, the next prize on Sundays. Over the top and hauled in at the 45. Stribling holding on after taking a big hit. Well, Stribling is putting on the show, but I tell you, Bowman has not thrown the ball this well all season. I mean, his accuracy, 
has been outstanding today. Just dime after dime. And Stribling doesn't get as much of the attention as Presley does, but he's a Sunday player. Well, terrific pump fake, and that frees up Stribling, breaking a tackle and back into the red zone for Oklahoma State. 6'2", 200 pounds. Transfer from Washington State. And there's a flag on the play. Illegal substitution on the defense. More than 11 players on the field. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. You know that's bad when you have more than 11 and you still can't stop the play? Well, and it goes back to our time of possession and number of plays run. This Tulsa defense has been out there a lot. Yeah, you know, you can't substitute these defensive linemen. They are worn out. I mean, 16 minutes and 37 plays already for Oklahoma State. And Bowman not only has the clean shirt, but almost a clean sheet. They have hardly got a hit on him. He's 17 for 20. Got a two tight end set here with Gordon in the backfield. Ollie with a nice block and wide open. Josh Ford with the touchdown. Terrific protection from Gordon in the backfield. And the true freshman from Stillwater with the score. It is the fourth touchdown toss for Bowman. Beautiful play with Ford coming across the formation, sort of the, the split zone action. Nobody hits him, free release, completely by himself. They assumed, Tulsa did, that he would be blocking, and no one, no one paid attention to him at all. Four different guys with a touchdown catch, and a busy first half for Logan Ward, his fourth PAT. 28 zip, pokes with the aerial assault today in Tulsa. Kind of a Bowman show in this second quarter. You know, the question coming in was about Ollie Gordon and what would it take to get him going since he's had a slow start to the season. Well, regardless of Gordon, Oklahoma State, if they're Number going to get to the Big 12 championship game, they need Bowman to play like this. The only un unanswered question right now is if at whatever establishment Jessica and her bachelorette party are, are enjoying the game today, if there are free beverages every time Allen throws a touchdown pass, there better be. That would be an and all. It's early in St. Pete. I know. Right? That's an all day. That's an all day party, that's right? That's a good Saturday right there. That's a good Saturday. Hey, and Beth, I got to tell you, it might also be the love letters that Jessica sends over oh, to Bowman because she every week <laughs> writes him a letter and she made him promise. She had to give it to him a few days early. She made him promise that he would not open it until this morning. So she always makes sure he knows go out there and kick some butt. Sounds like a. Something that Pat McAfee needs to tackle this week because Alan Bowman is his doppelganger, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Avant's going to bring it out for Tulsa. And we're going to take you back to the studio with Kevin Connors. Beth, we interrupt this love story to tell you about a stunner in Tallahassee. This is Seth Hennigan, Memphis dominating the Knowles. And you expect Memphis to move the ball and score. It is shocking that Florida State has been shut out so far. 10-0 right now there in Tallahassee. It's 10-0 in Columbia. Lenora Sellers, a touchdown on the ground. The Gamecocks, Beth, a 10-0 lead on LSU. I am, wow. I am worried about what might happen in Tallahassee if this continues. Of course, that's where Mike Norvell came from to go to Tallahassee. I, I believe Memphis ended up being the favorite before kickoff today. And the run here, Byron Ellison out to the 14-yard line. I know one thing, though. I know Kevin Connors does not agree with the concept of a bachelorette party during football season. <laughs> I, I would imagine that it's an 0-2 vote back in the studio. I'm sure we'll find out at halftime. <laughs> it has been a dominant showing for an Oklahoma State team that will head home to open up Big 12 play next week against Utah. Oh, by the way, Cam Rising got hurt again, the quarterback for the Utes. And then they are at Kansas State. Another good defensive play there and the wrap up on the edge. But yeah. they jump right in with the two favorites in the Big 12. Yeah, and Kansas State looked great last night against Arizona. You know, really kind of shut down the Arizona offense. So if you're thinking about the Big 12 race, I mean, right now the way Kansas State played last night, 
you're thinking, hmm, that's something. Yep. The way Oklahoma State looking tonight, to today rather, pretty, pretty significant. Yep. Don't know about Utah because of Cam Rising. That's the big question. We are approaching the two minute timeout and we will reach it. A third down and 11 coming up for Tulsa. Now. Kevin Connors in studio coming up on the Voya Halftime Report. We'll check in on a very puzzling start right now for LSU on the road in South Carolina. Plus well, a very puzzling start for Florida State as well with Memphis in town. And Trevor Maddich will be here to talk about the QB quandary in Florida. Live look-ins on Jessica's bachelorette party as well, Beth and Rod, coming up on the Voya Halftime Report. <laughs> Get on the gram, fellas. Get on the gram. We need art. It is, uh, it's been a good day so far for Oklahoma State fans. 28-0, Alan Bowman, Jessica's fiance with four touchdown throws. And here on third down and 11, and a good second effort to make it close for Viren Ellison. Coming up a yard short, it's fourth down. Feels like Oklahoma State and their fans have invaded Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Impressive showing. A fourth down in their own territory here. And they will go. Fourth down and one. You missed this. You're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Polk showing a six-man front. They'll run it with Ellison. He's got it off the left edge. And into the secondary for a first down out to the 40. Well, they did a great job of getting Nick Martin, the linebacker, caught up inside. And so Martin wasn't able to get over to his gap. And that opened up the big hole. They're going to speed it up, coming up on a minute to go. Looking deep for Benjamin. And a great play at the close. Corey Black got a hand up. Otherwise, Benjamin was gone. It is all about what you do at the moment the ball is in the air. Everything else, all the technique and everything else, none of it matters until you get in position to make a play. And Black did a good job of finding the ball and getting his hand up there. Senior from Waco, Texas, making his 29th start today. This is a very experienced Oklahoma State team. Only three freshmen and an under, another underclassman on their entire two deep. Out on the perimeter, Avant able to keep his feet and gets out across the 40. You know, there were high expectations for Oklahoma State coming into the Second season. Second charge time now. For 20 starters coming yeah. back for the team, an experienced offensive line, you know, kind of a veteran defense, an experienced quarterback. So the expectation was that they would be great. And then they started kind of poorly, winning both their first two games, but not looking good. This so far, best performance of the season for Oklahoma State. Kobe Hilton is the injured cowboy. Yeah, this is a 10-win team last year. They played in the Big 12 championship game for the second time in three seasons. Uh, we will find out a lot about the Big 12 and about Oklahoma State the next two weeks. Yeah. We talked about this being a trap game. I, I think Oklahoma State has avoided the trap so far. Yes. Hey, don't forget, kick off your week two NFL Sunday with the countdown crew. Alex Smith going all access with Mahomes and Kelsey as the Chiefs get set to host the Bengals. All the latest from Shefty. Find out who got mossed at Sunday NFL countdown 10 Eastern on ESPN and the app. And then stick around for birds of a feather flocking together on Monday Night Football. Eagles and Falcons at 8 Eastern. Eagles coming off that win in Brazil and the Falcons Ooh, what's cooking there at uh, the quarterback spot in Atlanta? More Peyton and Eli as well on ESPN2 Monday night. I do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. the Manning brothers, the Manning Cavs. You can't go wrong either way. Mm -hmm. No. With Joe and Troy in the booth. Here's Benjamin. Cutting back to the inside. Did not hit the turf until he gets across midfield. And that's good for the first down. Keeps the drive alive. They need to hurry. They do have a timeout. Looking deep. 
has a man at the 10, and again, it's broken up with a good defensive play. Joseph Williams, Cameron Epps that time. The safety got over to it. Yeah, a little bit late with the throw. Little late, which gave Epps a chance to show his range and make this play. And actually, it did look like there was a real opportunity to make that catch. Yes. Second and 10, 33 seconds to go. Bearing in mind, Tulsa has missed a field goal attempt already today from 44 yards out. A couple of timeouts remaining. They'll toss it underneath, and Avant a little underthrown. It's third down. Now they get Benjamin, 18, back in the game. He was out the last play. He's been their most dynamic receiver this season, and certainly today. Five catches, 86 yards, a long of 37. This is the guy that should be doubled by Oklahoma State in this situation. More of Viren Ellison, the true freshman, out of the backfield. And the incompletion, looking for Zion. Steptoe, and it's fourth down. Tough to complete those throws against man coverage when you're laying outside as a defensive back. You're expecting the outside throw. It's hard to throw an out route against that. And they will elect to bring on the punting unit. Yeah, I, I agree with this decision here. You don't want to give Logan Ward a look. The uh, Oklahoma State kicker yeah. has uh, made a 52-yarder this yeah. year. And with all their timeouts mm -hmm. and a relatively short field, Oklahoma State could get in field goal position. Angus Davies will try and bury this one. Presley will let it go out of bounds. Just a matter of the spot. As the clock ticks down, 18 seconds to go in the half. Hey, here are your featured games on ESPN Plus tonight. Some more in-state rivalry games. Rod got 17 of them today, including this one we're watching right here. Tech ODU, then North Carolina Central uh, visiting the Tar Heels. And then uh, Vanderbilt at Georgia State in Atlanta tonight, all coming up on ESPN+. Plus. If you don't have it already, make sure you download the app. Mike Gundy's got to be real pleased in uh, his coaching staff, the play calling, their preparation has been solid, and certainly the play of their quarterback, Alan Bowman, with the four touchdown passes to four different guys. And a 28-0 lead. Incomplete. Miscue looking for Gordon out of the backfield. I, I think Bowman's performance is the most compelling thing for Oklahoma State because there's been this uncertainty because teams have not been shy about their approach to defending Oklahoma State. It is, you know what? Gordon is not going to beat us. We know that he's dynamic. We're going to put eight guys in the box and dare your quarterback to beat us. And this should give Bowman a lot of confidence going into those games the next couple of weeks. Belahi spun around and then thrown down by Owen Ostrowski. The junior from right here in Tulsa. How cool is it that he's wearing his dad's number 55 jersey? Jerry was an All-American at Tulsa. They had it retired and then brought it back out for Owen to wear. And he makes the play there to end the half. Tulsa is set to receive that second half kickoff. They've got work to do. They are down 28 to nothing. And for Alan Bowman, Big first half with those four touchdown passes. Oklahoma State 28, Tulsa nothing. And we'll get you to Kevin Connors and Trevor Maddich for the Voya Halftime Report. Welcome back to the American Conference on ESPN. 28 nothing, Oklahoma State, an impressive first half. In particular, quarterback Alan Bowman with four TD strikes. All the talk about a trap game, he was having none of it. Alan Bowman was on target, started off with a nice short little throw to Presley, his first touchdown of the day, and then he started showing you how he could drop dimes. His dribbling on the outside comes right back with a 78-yarder. Also, dribbling, and then how about just finishing off the first half with one more inside to his tight end forward. Four touchdown passes for Bowman. Yeah, go ahead, celebrate that. He's all, got it rolling. All he did was hit on 82% of his throws in that first half for 274 yards. 
Tulsa to receive the opening kick to start out the second half. Beth Mowens, Rod Gilmore, Lauren Sisler with you today here at Chapman Stadium in Tulsa. And uh, with the SEC win in their rearview mirror with the Big 12 coming up, Oklahoma State talking about focus. They have shown it so far. Dialed in completely. We saw everything we need to see out of their offense. They got Gordon going a little bit, but it was the Bowman show in the first half. Something that they're going to need when they see Utah and Kansas State, that he can make all the throws that they need. And then the defense has played lights out for them just as well, too. So impressive for Oklahoma State. Those are their next two opponents coming up in Big 12 play. And that defense, which gave up uh, nearly 650 yards a week ago to Arkansas, much different story today for Tulsa, can they get something cranked up? They have had some chances, a missed field goal, and then on a late drive, a costly 15-yard personal foul penalty stalled another drive. Well, any shot to get back in the ball game for Tulsa depends on this opening drive. Kirk Francis to the air. And he finds Cam Benjamin, his favorite target again today. That's his sixth catch on seven targets as he approaches 100 yards for the day. Francis has gotten comfortable since the opening drive, opening, opening couple of possessions where he was 0 for 3, has been much better since then. Well, initially they announced that it was a first down, but it is not. Third down and one from their own 34. They'll run for it up the gut. Anthony Watkins, and he's got it. What had been a three-headed monster in the backfield their first three games, they've added another one. Four guys, Byron Ellison we saw quite a bit too in that first half. Just trying to find some sort of a spark from someone anywhere to give them a big play. They haven't really had many big plays today. 75 rushing yards total for the Tulsa team. Oh, it had Watkins oh. wide open out of the backfield on a wheel route, couldn't find him, and instead he'll run the other way and still pick up the first down yardage. You are so right. Watkins was completely alone on the left side of the field, coming out of the backfield. Francis didn't see him and then got flushed to the right side, but that would have been a touchdown. Kirk Francis, uh, after a slow start today, got a little bit better in that second quarter, but still just his eighth start. He redshirted last year, but still played four games and ended up the starter in the last two for Tulsa in a four and eight season. As Kevin Wilson continues the rebuild, Jacob Emmers with a first down catch. And that play right there is a good example of what he does really well. That's the run pass option. Fakes the run, gets this ball inside, gives his receiver a chance, sees it clearly, and just kind of whips its sidearm mm -hmm. the way a shortstop would to start a double play. Nice little sidearm throw. Good start to this second half for Tulsa. Picked preseason near the bottom of the AAC in the preseason poll. They'd like to change that narrative once they jump into league play. All the while mindful of uh, a shot at the new 12-team playoff for the, a potential American Conference champion. It's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out because, as you mentioned, we, we will see at least one group of five conference team get in the playoff. The highest ranked conference champ of the group of five will make it in a 12 team playoff. False start on the offense. All 11 players did not become set. Five yard penalty, second down. Still very early, short sample size, but through the first two weeks, Boise State was the highest rated G5. Memphis was close behind. I, I think the most important thing for fans to appreciate is that ranking does not equal seeding. Yes. And that's going to be difficult. You can be ranked in the top four or five, but your seeding could be lower because the first, the first four uh, highly rated conference champs will get the top four seeds. Throwing downfield and another good pass breakup on a deep ball. This time it's Kendall Daniels with an arm up at the right time, denying Connor Vaughn. Six foot four, 235 pounds. 
Kendall Daniels is long. And I, I envy guys like that because they're so long, they can fold bed sheets by themselves. You ever try to fold a bed sheet by yourself? It's not fun unless you got those long, long arms, you know? And he's long like that, see? Always good to have a teammate for that. Exactly. Yeah. And don't get me started on fitted sheets. It's just, <laughs> it's just impossible. A nightmare. Third down and 14. Edge pressure coming. Pass is away. And was the catch made in bounds? The officials say no. Tempest was outside the line. Incomplete. And there goes the punting unit. Yep. Excellent call. Another punt coming for Angus Davies with Brennan Presley back. Just not able to get things converted on third down for Tulsa. Three of ten on the field. in the afternoon. Of an incomplete pass is under further review. Do we really need to review that one? It should be quick, it, shouldn't it? Yeah, it looked yeah. like it was, that first step was well outside the line. I don't, I don't think he had either foot in bounds mm -hmm. or close to it. And that first look was, a, was an excellent look. Yeah, I think this ought to be a pretty quick review. Yeah, because the left foot was airborne yeah. already and yeah, the right foot was on the white. Exactly. Yeah, this should be quick for yeah. Harry Johns and the crew. You did have a chance, so you spent some time, right, with the uh, the mock selection? I will tell you this. What'd you learn? I have new respect and appreciation for the committee members mm -hmm. and how thorough and rigorous the process is. Uh, they leave no stone unturned when they're comparing teams. They have a lot of information. Um, and everyone works hard and committed at it. So that much is true. But I, the thing that, that came out of it for me is really that the public needs to understand the difference between where you are ranked and where you could be seated because that is going to be frustrating for people to see that. You see is working through. Look at how attentive Rod <laughs> is at the meetings. Look at that. We, we were all trying to do our best. There's a lot of, lot of information. Um, and you know, they, they work real hard at yeah. it, you know, and we've got put through our paces on it. Uh, all the games and After information review, you look at. The really on the field stands, incomplete pass, fourth down. I think that's the big takeaway is the top four conference champions mm -hmm. are one through four. That's right. And then that fifth conference champion could be seated anywhere from five to 12. You could have a conference champ, let's just say for example, a big 12 champ that is ranked number nine. Well, they'll be, number nine. they'll be seated number one through four, yep. probably four, and that will upset some people who saw their team ranked at number five and six and seven, and you get dropped. If you're ranked 11th or 12th on that last ranking, you may not get in. And the punt goes into the end zone. 28-0 Oklahoma State. Pokes first chance in the third quarter coming up. What do you... And we're back here in Tulsa, Oklahoma State up 28-0 currently. And talking to Coach Wilson, coming out of the locker room, he said, look, we're running the ball okay, we're stopping the ball well, but gosh, we got to quit giving up the explosive plays. That's what's really killing them right now. On the other side of the football, Coach Gundy talking about getting the run game going. He's very disappointed in their ability to run the football right now. They're really heavy in the box, and I think you can point to that same trend, Rod. We talked about it, 38 yards for Ali so far, not good. Dejan Stribling, nice move to the outside for the big gainer. And a first down for Oklahoma State, pick up a 21. Yeah, you know, Shimmy, you're right. Ollie Gordon has struggled today also. 38 yards running. He had 23 yards rushing on the opening drive. Only 15 cents. More of Stribling. The, the passing game certainly has loosened things up a bit. These first couple of plays, I, I see a six-man box. Yeah, well, you know, it started last week with Arkansas really playing sort of eight men in the box and daring Bowman to throw. And they didn't want to throw it last week. They've opened up throwing it this week, but they still haven't been able to get the running game and Ollie Gordon specifically going. And a pass incomplete, uh, looking for Tyler Foster. Unfortunately, Tyler was not looking for it. And, and here's the problem for Oklahoma State. 
you cannot have a player like Ollie Gordon and not have him rush for 100 yards. 1,700 yards last season. He's nowhere near rushing for 100 yards in a game this season, and he's supposed to be an All-American. And so that frustration comes, and you have issues when you have a situation like that. Led FBS last year with nine games of 100 yards rushing, and Tyler Foster makes up for that last miscue with the catch there for a first down. And as we were talking before, the score being what it is, how much do you want to yeah, run him now exactly. when you have Utah and Kansas State coming up? Mm -hmm. It's been all passes here to start out. Four plays, 40 yards. They'll throw it again, looking for... The deep ball, all kinds of tangled up there. Rashad Owens and Tyree Carlisle, no flag. It's a good call. I, I think people don't understand pass interference and defensive play right now. And I talk to the officials every week. Contact is not the issue. Only if you are really disrupting the receiver. And there's much more mutual combat now these days. Mm -hmm. So not as much pass interference unless you are getting an advantage in those situations. So that last play, not enough to pick up the first down. It's fourth and one. Analytics say go, Oklahoma State. Two tight ends in the game. And uh, Luke McIndoe, a fullback in the backfield. First charge, time out of the half. Oklahoma State, 30 seconds. You know, um, Ollie Gordon is a very emotional player. And you could see on his face and his reactions last week that he mm -hmm. was frustrated that he wasn't running the ball uh, an awful lot. But his two best runs last week were late in the game, and they were tosses to him yeah. to get him outside and get him going. They've not done that today. He's primarily run the ball inside on their inside zone play, and it hasn't really worked out for them. So there is this frustration from the Oklahoma State side that this veteran offensive line isn't getting the push and opening the holes for him inside. Hey, here's a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. And there they are, all season long. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Capacity crowd today at H.A. Chapman Stadium for the Turnpike rivalry. And Gordon is stuffed in the backfield, and he does not get it. Gavin Potter leading the charge as Tulsa looks for a turning point in this game and is the fourth down stop the one that does it. Well, and kudos to this defense. You take your wins where you can get them. And being able to, to celebrate and saying, you stopped again, arguably one of the best running backs in college football, that's a win for this defense. Attacking right from the start, you see 19 Gavin Potter shoot the gap and get in on that play. And so they get to Gordon before he can get to the line, and Ollie frustrated. Yep. And a missed opportunity to pick up some yardage. He is now 16 for 36 rushing today. And then Tulsa takes over first and 10. Anthony Watkins. Eight carries for 41 yards today for Watkins. They've used, used him more than the others after uh, Lloyd Avant was their top guy the first couple of games. Picked up a win over Northwestern State to open the season, then a tough loss to Arkansas State last week. And yet another PBU from this secondary. This time it's Kobe Hilton. That's their fourth one of the day. And I think the second one for Hilton, they've done a really nice job of being in position to get their hand on the football. It's not enough just to get technique and be in the area, but to make the play when you are there. We touched on it early, Rod. There is not a six foot receiver in the starting lineup for Tulsa, and they are all six foot plus in the secondary for the Cowboys, and they are winning the battles 1v1 today. Pressure coming, and down he goes, and it's a sack for the Pokes defense as they take down Kirk Francis. Xavier Ross, the first guy there. And getting around that right side of the offensive line. Burnett and Aguilar struggled over there with 
the speed and the hand action. Watch the move. Just right, turns him, strips past that right arm. Good movement by Ross to get in there. Had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Burnett at the right tackle and just beat him to the outside. And they break through for the first time on a day without their top edge rusher, Colin Oliver, sideline with the foot injury. As Presley makes the fair catch sliding down at the 26. 8.50 to go in the third. Gorgeous day this afternoon in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the Golden Hurricane and the Cowboys. to nothing Oklahoma State with the lead over Tulsa 850 to go in this third quarter let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Febreze a four touchdown performance by Alan Bowman and he's back to work out there offensively finding Brennan Presley on the edge breaking tackles and picking up a first down Speaking of Febreze, we got a breezy easy Alan Bowman. He writes the number 68 on his left wrist. It stands for 68 and breezy, meaning calm, cool, and crisp. That's what he represents as a player. He's even kill. It's something he started years ago. He acknowledged that personal foul last week. He wasn't 68 last week, but this week, all 68. And he's got a fifth touchdown in the books. Stribbling wins the foot race. A penalty flag down. Back where Bowman took a hit. If it stands 63 yards, he's already got a 78-yarder to Talon Shetron earlier in the game. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 22 of the defense. The foul will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play was a touchdown. That's on Chris Thompson. Stribbling with his second. And what a day for Dejon. Two TDs and a career-high 174. Well, we've talked about his NFL skills, and he's showing you his run after the catch. He's had a tremendous day. Big receiver at 6'2", 200 pounds, and man, has he had a day. He's had as big a day receiving as Bowman's had passes. Oh, five touchdown passes. Uh, did that uh, cause a little bit more uh, fun at the bachelorette party? I'm sure it did. The revelry continues in St. Pete. Another touchdown pass meant that the gals had to do uh, uh, another, little, uh, another little shot or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm not sure yeah, about the penalty, yeah, but it didn't end that. up mattering in the long run. I mean, that's close enough. He's already launched at that point. It's not like he took two, you know. I know we need to protect quarterbacks, but. You know, you, you wonder why guys stick around so long and why it's so hard to move on from this game that they love to play, and it's for a day like this, for a guy in his seventh yep. season at his third different school. After his dad, uh, Kirk, he's from a football family. He was a member of the Penn State National Championship team back in 1982. You know how easy it would have been for him to walk away after being in Michigan for two years and not playing? And then it was actually Sean uh, Moore, the, who was the offensive coordinator, now the head coach at Michigan, who hooked him up with Oklahoma State and said, you need to keep playing and go there. There's an opportunity for you. And he did. I think Lauren's got more for us. Yeah, and you know, Bowman talks about the O-line, and that was the biggest reason he decided to stay here. Obviously, they've got a lot of experience over there. They really made the difference last season. Starting out 2-2, two and two, they're the heartbeat of the offense because they came back. Bowman said he came back knowing they could compete at a high level. And a scrum for the onside kick. Tulsa comes up with it. Oklahoma State. Tries a move to put the finishing touches on this one early. <laughs> All fair in rivalry games, right? <laughs> Looks like they had a shot at it, too. Yeah, they did. They did. All is fair in the rivalry game. Although, from the Oklahoma State perspective, it's not that big a rivalry since they've dominated yeah. this thing. Since 1998. Yeah, they saw an opportunity, went for it here. Didn't come oh, up with it. Is that Kenneth Harris? 
who had a chance at it. Of course, if you watch the Kansas UNLV uh, fumble affair last night, you know to just fall on the loose football instead of letting it roll around. Nice run on the corner there for Viren Ellison. What has happened to Kansas? Ooh. Two losses in a row to Illinois and UNLV, and the expectation was that you know, they would be in the mix for the Big 12. They still could be in the yeah. mix for the Big 12 championship, but no one saw a one and two start for Kansas. Big win for UNLV. Barry Odom doing a heck of a job there in Vegas. And of course, with the moves for four Mountain West teams to join the Pac-12, you would think if the Pac-12 wanted UNLV, they probably would have grabbed them too. So now yeah. are, are some of those other Mountain West teams perhaps looking for a different home, maybe the American yeah. or elsewhere? Probably not looking at the Pac-12, because as yeah. you mentioned, Pac-12 would have taken those other teams right now mm -hmm. had they wanted to. But good for Oregon State and Washington State to get a conference back on track. Incomplete at the 25. Joseph Williams had it for a moment. And the uh, defensive backs continue to shine here for the Pokes. Yeah, That's you, another breakup. Yeah, they're, they're playing great on the back end, but you need your receivers to come up with plays like that if you're going to have a chance of making this game competitive. That is a well-thrown ball, catchable, and you've got to come up with that. It's Kale Smith with their fifth breakup. Yeah, good job by Smith hanging in there, trying to get the ball out. Third down and 10. Francis with time, with a man. Did he stay in bounds? Presley, and he did. Braylon Presley now joins his brother Brennan in the box score. Is that the family we hear cheering? In all likelihood, yeah. the, uh, the pride of Bixby. It's a great wow. catch laying out. And he's dragging that foot. And he has to complete the process the through hitting the ground. He does. Pass. It's under further review. I think that's a, that's a really great effort. Completely laying out. Well done by Braylon. The first time he's on the opposite side of the field from his brother, going head to head. You know, during the week, he actually helped out the Tulsa defense by playing the role of his brother in practice yeah. to help them see what it's like to defend his brother. As you see him get that left leg grazing the ground before he hits out of bounds. Sure and looks like he hangs on there. Well, you know, he completes the process. He does not lose the ball after he hits the ground. Really on the field is confirmed. First down Tulsa. What a day for Braylon and Brennan. Dad, Arthur, mom, Tia. They've got a couple of sisters that are also collegiate athletes, tracksters. You know what's really cool about that? I mean, that, that's a family deal. Ten years mm -hmm. from now, they'll be sitting around Thanksgiving talking about the day that we were all at the game and you guys went yep. at it head to head. That's cool. Not there they are. They, they uh, let's see, that's the Spartans hat from Bixby High. I guess they were trying to get, you know, the split uni. Mm -hmm. You know, half blue, half uh, orange, but uh, they... They opted to go with the high school uniforms for the two boys. So they won state championships together. Uh -oh. Rare drop uh -oh. there by Benjamin with a lot uh -oh. of green grass in front of him. Oh, oh my goodness. You know he hates that. He had a ways to run. You know why else mom and dad are smiling? With all that scholarship money, that's extra spending money <laughs> when everybody gets older. That is extra spending money. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> well done, Arthur and Tia. That's a terrific job raising that family. So a missed chance there for Tulsa. Second and 10 as Brennan looks on. They'll roll out Francis. Has options. Incomplete. Well defended. Check in uh, with Lauren. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned, such a family dynamic. I'll tell you, his mom, Tia, said she wanted to make T-shirts, but she had a little injury, had a little setback, so she's on crutches up here, but she is cheering both of her boys on, and she says iron sharpens iron. These two have been working out together for so many years, watching each other, growing up together, and their younger brother, Braden, also here, and uh, he's really been a staple in this family as well, so it's been a lot of fun watching them play, and just a family affair with a lot of athletes in the family. Francis in some trouble on the run. Heaves it downfield and out of bounds into the student section. Nice catch made there, but it's fourth down. You know, following up on Jimmy's discussion about the Presley brothers, you know, both of them are, are diminutive. They both have been all their lives told too small, too short, can't make, can't do this yet they've excelled at the highest level of college football despite that motivated chip on the shoulder for both of those young men to the point where brennan presley is third all time in career catches at yeah. oklahoma state and has a good chance to pass both justin blackman and rashawn woods to the top spot in school history before the season is done Even if it's on Oklahoma State, not enough Offside. yardage. Offside. Defense, number 96, five-year penalty, fourth down. Cody Walterscheid, still fourth down and five. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more manageable than fourth and 10. Offense stays in there, 6.20 to go here in the third, looking for a score. Their defense got him a fourth down stop to start this drive, trying to cash something in. Pressure coming, and the blitz gets to him. Sacked back at the 35 by Kendall Daniels. Bring in the house, and he couldn't stand the heat in the kitchen. Well, you have to expect that you will get pressure on a fourth and five in that situation, and they couldn't pick it all up, but the ball's got to come out. The yep. ball has to come out. And this time, Kendall Daniels, here it is. Bring them all in. We got a quarterback sack. Whoa. Everything rolling for the Cowboys. Oh, looking forward to that. The new format this year with 12 teams in, including five conference champions. Ali Gordon looking to start a fire. One of his better runs of the day, and actually he comes up a little gimpy. Jalen Kennedy with a tough hit on him. Best run of the day, and it's what we talked about. How much do you want to run him up 35 nothing? It hasn't been a great rushing day for him, and you want to get him going. That's been the issue the first three games. But how much do you want to risk him late in this ball game? And he comes up a little gimpy there. 13 yards on that carry. That's his best of the day. Now 17 rushes for 49 yards as the officials sort out the flag. At this point, I think I'm sitting him down. Holding, hold, hold, hold offense, number 72. 10 yards with spotted foul. First down. That run won't count. And remember, you have the meat of your schedule in your Oklahoma State. Your two biggest games are coming up the next two weeks with Utah and Kansas State. And although the rushing attack hasn't been good, you want to make sure that Gordon is healthy. You take a look on the right side of your screen, you'll see that is number 72 over there, Glass, who gets flagged. And that'll negate the run. Oliver stays on the sideline after that. Bowman back to the air, it's intercepted. Picked off at the 38-yard line by Kennedy. And the first takeaway for Tulsa. Tremendous job by Kennedy. He was the flat or underneath defender in the zone, and he just kept running out to that area, and Bowman never saw it. And Bowman saw his receiver running the out pattern and figured he'd get the ball to him and didn't realize that the underneath flat coverage, Kennedy, was coming over. You see right here, Bowman never sees the underneath coverage coming across. That's such a good play by Kennedy, reading the quarterback's eyes. When you play zone defense, your eyes are locked in on the quarterback and he can take you right to the football. And I'll go back to Lloyd Avant now in the backfield beside Francis. And he'll get the call. 
down to the 35-yard line. Trey Rucker with another tackle. Trey has had two games, one with 15 tackles, one with 17 to come into the day. Tops in the country in takedowns. Nick Martin, the middle linebacker, wasn't too far behind on that list. There's Trey, redshirt senior from Waldorf, Maryland. Second down and eight. Get the ball into Benjamin's hands. Breaking a tackle down inside the 25 for a first down. Good Jeff looking start for Tulsa here. Benjamin has been the spark plug for the offense. He's been the one guy who's made plays uh, for Tulsa this afternoon. A little jet sweep action. Get him in space and see what he can do. But he got a little dinged up, too. He got landed on, and he struggled to come off the field. Appears to be all right on the sideline. Five foot eight, 175 pounds. Takes a pounder, but he's a tough guy. Francis, incomplete through the hands of Avant, which may not have been the worst case scenario there for Tulsa. Looked like they were going to lose some yardage with Nick Martin nearby. You think he heard Nick Martin in the area? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a possibility. We were uh, asking Brian Nardo, the defensive coordinator, what advantages they might have today, and he said Nick Martin is an advantage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he is very fast for a linebacker, six feet, 220 pounds, very instinctive. Second down and 10, Martin right in Francis' face, and it's intercepted, picked off by Cam Smith. Cuts back inside to avoid the quarterback, stays on his feet way down inside the 30-yard line and the Cowboys take it right back on the interception. Francis got nothing on this throw. There's nothing behind it at all and Cam Smith saw it, played it perfectly, cut in front of the receiver and was off to the races. He definitely heard Nick Martin coming and saw him right, yep, in, his right face. in his face. Nothing on that throw at all. That ball floated out there, and Smith was in great position to pick it up. But that play, as you said, was caused by Nick Martin up the middle, putting pressure on Francis, and Francis got nothing on the throw. 50 yards on that return. And it's uh, Ceci Vailai in at tailback. Trying to get to the edge, dives down to the 25. So we may not see uh, Ollie Gordon anymore today with the big lead and under four minutes to play in the third. Yeah, he, he did limp a little bit off the field after that last carry. Hope that he's okay and ready to go for next week. By Lahi. Again, with the new expanded Big 12, this is the end of their non-conference portion of their season. Lauren? Guys, it's interesting, just on that last play and that turnover, I saw Ollie Gordon come running out of the locker room, sprinting over, didn't have his helmet on, but he was pretty perky, pretty steppy over here, ran and grabbed his helmet, so we'll get an update and figure out why he was in the locker room. There are the numbers on Gordon today. On an afternoon where uh, Alan Bowman has been lights out in the passing game, and that's been the driving force as he approaches 400 yards today. A sixth touchdown pass would tie for the most in a game this year in FBS as a flag goes down. Shotamide King with the catch. Holding. Offense. Number 71. Ten-yard penalty. Still third down. That's on Dalton Cooper, the left tackle. And you know the Oklahoma State sideline is aware of the fact that another touchdown pass would tie the record for the season. And if that kind of information comes down to you pretty quickly, you know who's in position to gain a record or break a record. You got a record guy up in the booth? Oh, there's the sports information director is always <laughs> yep. letting the guys on the sideline know, letting the coaches know, and letting the coaches decide if they want to go yes. for something or not. What you got for us, Lauren? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify Ollie Gordon coming from the locker room because he had to go to the bathroom. Okay. You know, sometimes you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. Oversharing, Shimmy, oversharing. Alahi. Oh, nice move. Gets down to the 25 yard line. 
There's no privacy for players anywhere. <laughs> Man. Good yards after catch, but uh, not enough to pick up the first down. We, we got to clarify sometimes. You know, a lot of times you see the... <laughs> you know, maybe going in there to have a little potty break, but, you know, you got to find a bathroom sometimes. I it mean, happens. You yeah. see, Shimmy, hydrate. Shimmy hydrate. believes in sharing everything <laughs> on social media <laughs> and during a game. Uh, Not everything has to be shared with Shimmy. Uh, open book over here. Morgan <laughs> Ward is on to attempt from 43 yards away. And he's got it. 38 to nothing. Oklahoma State in front. Hey, this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. So if you are an Oklahoma State fan, the one thing you are concerned about is the fact that you're not running the ball very well and that Ollie Gordon is still way off his pace of last season, and that's with a veteran offensive line that you were really excited about. You brought all that back for this season, and you still don't have an effective running game three games into the season. Yeah, there, there are, uh, at the start of the day, 55 teams that are 2-0. and They have the fourth fewest rushing yards per game of those teams, and they've only run for, for 61 Delta. today. Yeah, that, that's a concern. And you are on tap to face a Utah team that if nothing, is always physical and yep. refuses to allow rushing and, you know, demands that they rush the ball. That is a physical team, so you need to have your rushing attack in order when you line up to play the Utes. Kickoff is short. Benjamin will fair catch it, and it's time for us to check in with Kevin and Trevor. All right, Beth and Rod, AT&T is keeping fans connected as we take a look at our multi-view over on ABC. A huge stop moments ago on fourth and goal from the one. South Carolina, a one-touchdown lead on LSU. On ESPN, Memphis, a two-score lead on Florida State. And the SEC Network, they're at the half. Missouri, a 17-14 halftime lead on BC as we send it back to Beth and Rod. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. And we've got a change at quarterback here. Cardell Williams is on for Tulsa for the first time today. Good with his feet. And he will run it out across the 25. Gets under the tackle of Trey Rucker. He is the fastest player on the Tulsa team. But he is more than just a runner. He, he can throw the football. Six foot two, 183 pounds. Richard, sophomore out of Westfield High School in Houston, Texas. Texas. Scored in their first game and then scored again in their second game. Seen him more often in a short yardage goal line situations. They have a third quarterback, Cooper Lega, a grad transfer from Utah State. Good penetration up front that time to get to Anthony Watkins in the backfield. Jeff Robertson, first guy there. Well, Cardell Williams has a strong arm. You see his his numbers, what he's done. Favorite player, likes to compare himself to Lamar Jackson. He, not, not that he is Lamar mm -hmm. Jackson, but that what he's he aspires to be like Lamar Jackson. Not a bad, uh, not a bad model. You can see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. Final minute of this third quarter. Quick release to the edge. Watkins, the swing pass and Got twisted up on the tackle. Kenneth Harris was there, and it's fourth down. Talk about Oklahoma State's tackling today. Their pass defense has been excellent. Their tackling has been clean, effective. And this is about the time when you find your, your role as a defense. You know, you don't tackle much during the offseason. First couple games can be a little sloppy. You get to that third game, you do expect to be crisp and clean in your tackling. And Oklahoma State has shown it today. Cowboys holding Tulsa to just 253 total yards of offense through the first three quarters. 38 nothing. all Allen Bowman today. We got backup quarterbacks warming up. Alan Bowman without the helmet. 
could be a change of foot. How about the big day for the SEC on ABC? South Carolina leading LSU right now. Coming up next, Texas A&M, Florida, and then number one, Georgia in the nightcap, visiting Kentucky in Lexington. SEC on ABC. Huge game in Gainesville for mm -hmm. Florida. Gavin Freeman with the nice return. Still on his feet across midfield, breaking a tackle. And a flag flies at the tail end of the play as he dives down to the 42. Actually gonna spot it at the 44. Let's see if it stays there. And let's also see who comes in at quarterback. Illegal block in the back. Number 31, 10 yards in the spot of the foul. First out. It's gonna wipe out a good return. Right in front of you, the last block. You saw the white jersey go in back of the blue jersey and send the guy sprawling. All right, so we've got a new quarterback coming on. First appearance for Garrett Rangel, the sophomore out of Frisco, Texas, now in his third year at Oklahoma State. This will be his 10th game. He has four starts on his resume. Shows Oklahoma State over Utah and Houston and Vandy, waiting to make his impact. And also a new running back, Trent Howland. And the toss is to Josh Ford, the freshman who has a touchdown already today. Picking up a few yards there. Marcuselli ran him out. I think it's a smart move to get Ollie Gordon out of the game and let Trent Howland get some, some reps here. Mm -hmm. Six foot three, 240 pound back. That is a huge running back. Met in the backfield and corralled at the 46. That was Brody Reese. Howland is a transfer from Indiana where he spent a couple of seasons. And there you see Ollie Gordon. Rest up for next week. See if you can get the rushing attack going next week against Utah. Yeah, that'll start the gauntlet of nine conference games with the uh, new expanded Big 12. Mm -hmm. Preseason poll said the Pokes would be third behind Utah, Kansas State, though. Next two opponents on the schedule for them. See how it plays out on the field. Rangel connects for a first down, and it's Ford into Tulsa territory down to the 42. Pickup of 11. A little closer look at the Big 12. Everybody getting rid of divisions. The top two teams will go to that Big 12 championship game. And the whole idea, right, Rod, as a conference is to set yourself up with at least a couple of teams that get into that championship game with a shot of advancing to the yeah, playoff. It's going to be fascinating with this 12-team playoff because, you know, you, you figure there's a good chance the SEC and Big Ten will have somewhere between six and eight teams yeah. in the playoffs. So you want to have a chance of getting a couple teams in if you're the Big 12 in the ACC. Broken tackle on the edge. Shetron. Another touchdown recipient earlier in the ball game gets into the red zone here for Oklahoma State. The other thing to keep in mind about the postseason now, the playoff, two losses no longer eliminates no. you from consideration. That was always the case in the past. But we're going to have some two-loss teams in the playoff and maybe even a three-loss team. You can go winless non-conference, and if you yeah. win your championship, you're in. That's right. You see the heads to heads so far this year are pretty even. Some of the higher profile losses have been with the SEC, but they're five and six overall, head to head in the uh, power four, incomplete there, looking for the end zone. So we went back and we looked at the last five years of what teams would have been in the playoff if you looked at the postseason. You see the head to head uh, competition there. And over the last five years, the Big Ten and the SEC, had we had a 12 team playoff, would have had six or seven teams in each year. And it was always looking at, would you get the ACC with two or the Big 12 with two? And that's just looking at the last five years or so. What will happen this year? We'll have to wait and see. Flags on the snap.
False start. Offense. All 11 did not get set. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And of course, for a conference like the American, you're looking for a signature win. They're working on run one right now. Memphis is leading Florida State in the fourth quarter down in Tallahassee right now. Well, Memphis was one of the preseason favorites to make it to the playoff. That's 20 to 9 over on ESPN right now. I'm sure everyone at home with their multiple screens and their football caves keeping an eye on all the action. Rangel on the run dives down inside the 15. Well, if Memphis State hold if Memphis holds on and beats Florida State, that's going to propel them up the rankings yep. and put them in great position if you if they were to go on and win the AAC. Third down and six. The backup quarterback and a new running back out there on this drive for Oklahoma State. Howland spins his way to a first down inside the five. Oh my goodness. The yards after contact at 240 pounds. He didn't know he could spin like that, but he had a spin move and ran through a couple tackles. That number 24 looks Nick Chubbian almost <laughs> in, the, in the orange. To the end zone, incomplete. That pass behind Shodamide King. Over 500 yards of offense today. Combo that with the stout defense. And when we talked to Mike Gundy this week, you know, all the distractions that kids have these days, focus on mm -hmm. a daily basis can be an issue. Not an issue today. They have been locked in in all three phases. He was worried about the trap game and the focus. First charge time out of half. Tulsa, 30 seconds. We'll take the time out with him early in this fourth quarter. The AAC on ESPN Plus is your exclusive home for more than 1,000 games and events. It's also the destination for All-American Championships, as well as the All-Access Series that takes you inside the lives of student athletes. If you're a fan of the American, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash AAC or download the ESPN app. Oklahoma State up 38-0. Second and goal, looking for more. Garrett Rangel on the rollout, and they'll toss it away. Third down coming up. Big day for Allen Bowman, 396 yards passing, five touchdowns. Big day for uh, Dejon Stribling, seven catches, 174 yards, two touchdowns. And uh, pitching the shutout right now for the Oklahoma State defense. Yeah, and, and if you're Tulsa, you, you want to have something positive happen. You want to get a stop. You don't want to worry about the score. You want to keep them out of the end zone here. Rangel's going to run for it. Stuffed at the one. And it's a power push right now, and Tulsa able to keep him out. Yeah, I love the energy and the effort by that defense down there to keep Rangel out of the end zone. That is, you want to play every play. When you're down like this, you can't, you can't look at the scoreboard. It just, it just doesn't help. You have to consider each play in and of itself and just play the next play. That was Mario White, one of the first guys there. And now fourth down and goal from the one. Offense stays on the field for the Pokes. This is the dilemma for a head coach here. Do you add points on with a field goal? Is that worse than going for it on fourth down? That that's the dilemma that Mike Gundy has right now. Which which seems more Second appropriate? Second charge. Here. Time out of the half. He already has Oklahoma pulled State. the majority of the skill players out. Yeah. With 10:09 to go here in the fourth, and uh, looks like he wants a little more time to think it over. Fourth down. When we come back. Kevin and Trevor in studio, eight-point game. South Carolina up when Caden Durham takes it in. And this is a nine-yard touchdown run. He had a long of four yards coming into this. He's a freshman, and he's already ripping off big plays. If they went for two, missed it. It's a two-point game. Good one going on over on ABC. 
We got some drama right here on a fourth down and goal from the one for Oklahoma State. Ceci Valahi is the tailback and they'll work into the traditional eye as Rangel goes under center. The pitch wide open to pay dirt for Ceci and it's touchdown Oklahoma State. Excellent play execution. The flow to the right side. The nickelback Kennedy number two takes a couple steps that way and the outside is wide open. The Kennedy number two is on the edge. He feels this flow. He steps inside and he has no way to get outside and stop that run. And so Sessi with his first touchdown scoot of the season. Extra point is good. 44 to nothing. Oklahoma State. Early in this fourth quarter, the total offense now up to 518 total yards. As we take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear. You know, the thing that jumps out at me when you look at that top 10, nine of the 10 top 10 teams are from the Big Ten and the SEC. Mm -hmm. Now that's gonna change over time, but it gives you a sense of just, you know, just initially how voters look and feel about those two conferences and why we talk about it's gonna be hard for the Big 12 and the, AC and the mm -hmm. ACC to get more than one team in, maybe two at best, because of that domination as you look at those top 10. Yeah, Miami, you see the only ACC team there. The All-State Playoff Projector this week, you can follow along every week on ESPN.com, has Miami projected to win the ACC. But then there's two other teams, Clemson and Louisville, yeah. that would be in the top 12, but would get knocked out by other conference champions who get an automatic bid. Well, the beautiful thing about this playoff is that when we get to October and November, mm -hmm. there will be 30 to 35 teams still in the mix, which we've never had before. That means more talking heads. Do, yep. we, do we have enough yet in, no, no, in college no, football? No, Just no, no. keep growing it. Keep growing <laughs> it. It's going to be great conversation. Yeah, with the four playoff team, you know, there were six or seven teams you talk about, but now we're, we're going to quadruple that. Hey, ESPN supports the College Football Playoff Foundation's Extra Yard for Teachers Week each year to celebrate great teachers across the country who have inspired so many of us. Nominate a great teacher in your community by visiting cfpfoundation.org. What you got for us, Lauren? Yeah, and two great teachers for Camden Benjamin. His two parents, Kevin, a coach, his mom, Melanie, an athletic director, both educators, have really helped him get where he is today, always focusing, focusing on academics. And oh, by the way, y'all, he's going for his second master's, his first in 22, business, and now sports leadership. Smart young man. We got a new quarterback here in Cooper Lega, the grad transfer from Utah State, five years there, and now is first at Tulsa. So all three quarterbacks seeing some action here for the Golden Hurricane in the second half. Hey, hey just to follow up on that Cam Benjamin point, that's effective use of your scholarship. Yes. You get five years and you go pick up all those degrees, that is that is well done. That is That should not be overlooked or passed over, that that young man has really taken advantage of the opportunity. The guy spins out to the 25. Parker Robertson with the tackle. As it stands right now, it's it would be the second biggest shutout win for the Pokes in the last 24 years. Yeah, you know, and the players we talked to yesterday for Tulsa were so excited about this game and their chance to, uh, as they say, make a point in this rivalry and to to show that Tulsa could stand up to Oklahoma State, not so much today. Four-man pressure, Lagaz throw on the wheel route completed to Ellison, who's got a first down out towards midfield. Well-thrown ball by Lagaz. Gave it enough air to allow his receiver to get underneath it, 
Personal foul. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 87 of the defense. 15 yards to the play. First down. Now get some extra yardage here with the penalty. A, a late hit again. We are protecting quarterbacks. Sometimes it can be a little ticky tack, but he's defenseless. You cannot take that hit. Cannot hit him. The ball is completely gone. Plenty of time to pull up on this. And that, that one is clearly excessive. That's Deshaun Brown flagged on the play. The guy on the rollout and the completion to the 31 yard line. That's Corey Smith with the catch. This is a young roster that Kevin Wilson is trying to develop. And you work so hard during the week. You want something to show for it. They desperately want to get in the end zone. Down to the 20. Yeah, they've got a couple of road games coming up. La Tech, North Texas, then they'll be home to Army. So, you know, you take what you can from this game and then quickly spin it forward to get ready to start jumping into league play. I think that's right. You, you take the recognition that you're playing a top 13 team in the country. Roy Devant. It feels better, though, if you're Tulsa, if you can put some points on the yeah. board. And there were times when, you know, the Tulsa defense can say, hey, we, we did some good things. We shut down Ollie Gordon. On the other hand, couldn't do anything about Bowman and his touchdown passes. To the end zone, incomplete. So right now, you're looking for something you can build on for next week as you get ready for your next game, as you mentioned. You know, they've got Louisiana Tech coming up, North Texas, both those games are on the road. They have not been shut out, by the way, in six years, so that's also a little bit more incentive. Arkansas got them in 2018. Third down and eight here for Lega. Well, you can't kick a field goal to avoid the shutout. No, you, you have to. If you don't pick up this first down, you got to go for it on fourth down. Is that bunting to avoid the no-hitter? Yeah, hitter? you, can't, you yeah. can't do that. Second charge, timeout of half. Tulsa, media timeout. I like the baseball reference. That's good. Tulsa will call the timeout 7.03 to go. Nothing. All Oklahoma State this afternoon in Tulsa. 7:03 to go. Alan Bowman, 24 of 31 with five touchdowns and 396 yards passing, and the defense has been pitching a shutout, trying to keep it that way. With Tulsa into the red zone, third down and eight. Cooper Lega is the quarterback. He keeps and he's thrown down for a loss. Deshaun Brown got to him in the backfield. And Deshaun Brown never bought any of the face. He stayed home outside looking for the quarterback and made the play. A terrific stop. Oh, we have a bunting with the no-hitter situation oh, here. Oh, they are going to bring on the field goal kicker. Yeah, not, not, not a fan. Looking for points, Seth Morgan. Missed earlier from 44. This one's a 43-yarder. And he's got it. <laughs> Tulsa on the board. The derisive cheer from the Tulsa fans. <laughs> Yay, we have three points. <laughs> in time to a better day in this rivalry 1982 Tulsa and Oklahoma State before the game Oklahoma State head coach Jimmy Johnson said this is not a rivalry Oklahoma's a rivalry for us and Tulsa head coach John Cooper before his Ohio State day said it's a natural rivalry I don't think you can underestimate the importance of that and Tulsa went on to win it on the field 25 to 15 and uh, carry off on the 
his shoulders for Coach Cooper after they won it. That was back in 1982, but they have not celebrated like this since 1998. That's the last time they beat the Pokes. Oklahoma State has won nine in a row. Mm. Well, it can't be a rivalry if it's one-sided. Other teams got to win, so Tulsa will, they'll get a chance. They got, what, eight more years they're gonna play this game? Yep, this just renewed it. Yep. You know, they've had success here in the past. Cooper, one of uh, four different coaches recently that has a 10-win season at Tulsa. There's a flag down on the play. No, they uh, lost. Holding. Number eight, the receiving team. After this is the goal. First down. They lost one of their former coaches, Steve Cragthorpe, who passed away in August. He coached here in the early 2000s, kind of re-energized the program after John Cooper, and then Todd Graham, Bill Blankenship, Philip Montgomery most recently, and now here's Kevin Wilson in year two, trying to get back to those winning ways. Rangel and Howland together again in the backfield. And here's Trey, carries it out across the 10. If you're Kevin Wilson, this is, this is a game that you, you help your team wipe from the slate and move on because it has no bearing on the conference. And it's the best team you're gonna face all year. I don't think there's any question about that. And you have to get your guys back, refocused and move on to conference play in the AAC. On second and six, keeping it on the ground. Uh, looks like enough for the first down. They'll move the chains out across the 18-yard line. I am surprised and impressed at how light Howland is on his feet. Oh. His ability to change direction and pitter-pat with his footwork at 240 pounds. Just kind of nifty as he can pick his way through. Not, not your typical big, powerful back who can only do one thing. A well-balanced attack. Just about everybody able to get involved in a big hit on the perimeter for Tulsa. And Elijah Green got right into Gavin Freeman. Hello. As a defensive back, those are situations you look for, you get excited about. He's rolled up in perfect position, and he's like, no, quarterback's not going to throw this ball. I'm already here. And he does, and he's like, this is my guy. That is a hit that will, they will show on the film review tomorrow, and he'll be like, I am all that. <laughs> I am all that. I'm here for it. Freeman getting some attention from the training staff. And the Tulsa defense trying to bow up a little bit. They are able to corral Howland, and it's third down. Clock continues to move, under four minutes to go. But an impressive day for the Cowboys. Just three guys coming, eight dropping. Rangel buying some time. Incomplete, and it's fourth down. You know, Mike Gundy, <laughs> we had a nice visit with him this week. I don't think there is a more candid mm -hmm. or forthright coach in college football than Mike Gundy. I mean, he, he tells you exactly what he thinks, what he thinks about his team, what's, what's good, what's bad, uh, what he said to his coaching staff, what he said to his players, and he's not afraid to opine on issues in college football. Yep. He's very outspoken about NIL. He told us this week that his program is 38th in the country in NIL and 12th in the Big 12 in NIL money, um, bringing some transparency to the process. He talks about that, um, hey, you know, we, we can't compete chasing the high price transfer guys, but we can get some guys, and that's what we do. 
Hey, let's get uh, back to the studio. Kevin's got an update on that SEC showdown. Kevin? Indeed, Beth, and with a name like Rocket Sanders, there's a reason, Trevor Maddich. He shows off the afterburners here. Now, LSU is starting true freshmen at corner and at safety. And when Sanders is breaking out into the open, it seems like the tackling isn't there to stop it. 66-yard touchdown. He's over 130 yards on the day, 30-29 in the fourth quarter. Meantime, Pat Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers coming off that dramatic comeback win over Cincinnati a week ago. The backyard brawl is next, Beth. Looking forward to that one. And is this a fourth quarterback into the game? Kittleman comes on for Tulsa. So Stephen Kittleman gets a look. But going back to, to uh, Coach Gundy again, too, for a second. You know, th th there are a lot of folks around college athletics that aren't necessarily thrilled with the direction that things are heading. But again, I thought Mike was really candid about, hey, you know what? I, my kids are out of the house, so the, the team is my, are my kids now. I don't have any hobbies outside of football. Nice pick up here for Tulsa. And even though I may not like the way things are, I'm enjoying the process of embracing the change mm -hmm. and trying to move forward and figure out ways to win. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. Well, and, and he also says he wants to see players benefit from the changes, yeah. name, image, and likeness, and the like, and uh, he's not afraid to Jonathan weigh in on issues like the potential settlement of the house case Tulsa. with revenue First sharing. Saturday he shared goal. his opinion on that, and you know he would like to see some structure and collective bargaining so that there's something settled out yep. there. Two minute timeout. Yeah, he, time he's out. embracing this system, he's and he the, he's challenging clock, Oklahoma minutes. State to be more two competitive. Minutes. Thank you in this area. Two-minute timeout here in Tulsa. Back in a moment. Still ahead, the SEC on ABC. Next up, it's Texas A&M at Florida. And then tonight, 7.30 Eastern, number one Georgia and Kentucky. Find live sports with where to watch. Cool little click on, on the ESPN app and ESPN.com. And Tulsa breaks through for the touchdown. Steven Kittleman, the fourth quarterback of the day, finds the end zone. Oh, that is a moment he will remember forever. Getting into the game in this 72-mile uh, difference rivalry between these two squads and being the quarterback that got his team into the end zone. Led them on a nice drive down the field. Yeah. Just four plays, they score. Yeah, shows some toughness here in fighting his way into the end zone, running through a couple tackles. And the extra point is good. Touchdown for Tulsa, and it's 45 to 10. Here in the final two minutes this afternoon at H.A. Chapman Stadium. Big story, big picture is Alan Bowman, 24 of 31, 396 yards, five touchdowns. If you're a Cowboy fan and you were worried about your quarterback play and whether you could see him deliver through the air when everybody was loading up on Gordon, well, he showed out today. Five touchdown passes, dribbling with three of them, a couple of long bombs and then a shorter one, and then Ford, the freshman, also getting into the act. So. Bowman, kind of a career day with touchdown passes, having his receivers deliver after the catch. Is it enough to get him on the Pat McAfee show this week? I, mm. I think they need to reach out to Stillwater. Look at that. It says Doppelganger. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, there's something there. Need to get him the black, uh, uh, the black tank top. Uh, yeah, if he had the tank top on, I think he'd get on the show automatically. <laughs> Off, Gavin Freeman with the return uh, across the 25. Let's get another update from the studio. Kevin? All right, Beth, we've got an update 
to let you know that the Backyard Brawl is coming your way 15 minutes from now here on ESPN2. Garrett Green and the Mountaineers of West Virginia set to take on the Pitt Panthers. And DJ Lagway had a huge game a week ago against Samford. Garrett Mur uh, Graham Mertz is expected to start for the Gators. You will see that game coming up at the bottom of the hour, Beth. Yeah, they, that's a program looking for a spark right now. Is it going to be Lagway? I want to see him play. I, I, yeah. He caught my attention last week. I'd like to see more of him. Big game for both those teams in terms of the, the re direction the rest of the season will take as Howland gets the carry. And it sets up the, uh, the pokes here for the big showdown next week as they move into Big 12 play. First, Utah at home, and then a road trip to Kansas State. Big game, Utah. It'll be interesting to see how Utah fares today without Cam yeah. Rising at quarterback. That, that's going to be a very physical game next week. Content here to run the ball and run this clock out. The other thing for Cowboy fans to keep an eye on moving forward, Ali Gordon, 17 carries, 41 yards. So the leading rusher last season, I think the average is still going to be about yeah. two and a half yards per carry through yeah. the first three games. Yeah, you know, it, it's a problem now. I mean, three games into the season, and they haven't been able to get him on track. So it, it's a problem, a concern going into Utah. They got to get more up front with an offensive line that should be handling the rushing attack better. I thought Gordon was better at being decisive today at not dancing around in the backfield. Allen dances his way into the secondary and across midfield and gets shoved out of bounds. But that offensive line and their tight ends, they've not handled the movement defenses are giving them, twists and stunts. They've not handled eight men in the box very well. Uh, you know, Utah's going to look at that, and Utah's going to go, well, we're going to see if Bowman can throw it that well because we think our secondary can match up better. So it's going to be the same issue for them next week against Utah. And so you spin it and look at it as an opportunity. The spotlight will be on them next week, a chance to jump right back into it. Howland gets the call. But, you know, you, you give Oklahoma State credit for what they did today. This is the way you should play against a team that you're expected to handle. And they were dominant. 45 to 10, the final. Allen Bowman, five touchdowns on 396 yards passing. Now the defense holding Tulsa to 352 total yards. And Oklahoma State improves to 3 0. Tulsa drops to 1 and 2. Listen, thank you for stepping in for. Brian Custer today pleasure. helping us out. We appreciate it. Lots of fun. Yes. Enjoyed it. Hey, coming up, college football scoreboard with Kevin and Trevor. I'm Beth Mowens, Rod Gilmore, Lauren Sisler. Thanks for joining us here in Tulsa.